No, I guess, uh, well, we, we may find out soon. But look, let's move to the Secret Service now. The director, Kimberly Cheetle, how that woman uh, is still in a job is absolutely beyond me. But look, the head of the agency, she's appeared at a heated committee hearing into what happened in Pennsylvania a couple of weeks ago now where Donald Trump was shot. And true to form, she still won't answer key questions about the catastrophic failings of the agency on that day. Director Cheadle, in your leadership, your agency got outsmarted and outmaneuvered by a 20-year-old. How can we have any confidence that you could stop a trained professionals from a nefarious nation state? Those are absolutely questions that we need to have. I know they're questions. Josh, what a ridiculous answer. This woman is in complete denial. How hopeless is she? You know, like you, I, I, I am just absolutely astounded that here we are almost a week and a half after the former president, Donald Trump, almost had his head blown off in front of the entire world. Here we are, and this woman still has a job. You know, once upon a time in America and in Western nations more generally, there was such thing as a sense of shame, as, as a sense of, of self-awareness, whereby if you, are a, if you are a public official and something like this happens under your watch, you resign. You know, you have enough sense of dignity and self-respect to get the heck out of there. You know, in fact, I actually saw a headline maybe like two or three months ago out of Israel, and their IDF commander who was responsible for protecting the Gaza communities actually resigned about three months ago. And the quote that he gave, it's a very tragic quote, he said, I have failed in my life mission because he failed to protect those communities after the Hamas Holocaust of October 7, 2023. Ditto Kimberly Cheadle. You failed. Your, your, your vocational mission has been an utter and complete failure because as Secret Service Director, you really have one job above all, and that is to keep the President of the United States and their family safe and secure. This is ridiculous. And you know what? But there actually is a silver lining here before, before I finish. There's actually a very nice silver lining, which is the fact that after this outrageous hearing, which many people are saying here in America was the single worst congressional hearing they have ever seen from a witness ever. The silver lining is that in the aftermath of this, you have the chairman, Jim Comer, the Republican of, of Kentucky, who has written a joint letter with the ranking member of the Democrat, Jamie Raskin in Maryland, where they jointly are calling on Kimberly Cheadle to resign because she has disgraced herself. So if you get that kind of bipartisan unity these days in Washington, you know you've probably messed up. Uh, absolutely. Well, I want to show you this next uh, exchange, Josh, because this actually warrants her being fired on the spot. Have a listen to this. So were you also aware there was a credible threat uh, to President Trump was facing? He was facing a heightened security threat due, due to a foreign adversary? Yes. My question is, if he'd been the sitting president, would he have had the same security he had on July 13th or would have been beefed up? There is a difference between the sitting so president. Did. So your answer is he didn't. And we know, uh, she, well, she claimed, of course, that it was due to a sloped roof for the catastrophic failings of the Secret Service. And uh, this was her trying to answer questions about it. Do you remember in an ABC interview you did that you didn't have people on the roof of the AGR building because you were worried about safety because of the slope? I recall that statement. Okay. Does the Secret Service have written policy you can share with us about slope roofs? No. Okay. So why did you act like there was one? The problem is, Director, you put your counter snipers on a 312 roof, which is steeper than the 112. And by the way, the 112 is ADA compliant. You can build a, a ramp for a wheelchair. Josh, I don't know if she knows uh, the difference between a sloped roof and a non-sloped roof, but the fact that she admitted that, that she knew of the threat to Trump's life and still did nothing about it. Yeah, you know, it's actually e e even worse than that. And, and that was actually a very good interrogation by Congressman Fallon of Texas, who's somewhat of a rising star in the party, I think. But, you know, it's actually even worse than this, frankly, because it actually just came out this past weekend that Kimberly Cheadle and the Secret Service actually lied to the American people. So in the first 24 to 36 hours after the, the horrific near assassination that, of course, tragically did result in, in the death of the innocent civilian bystander, Corey Comperatore, they actually denied, that is, the Secret Service in the first 24 to 36 hours after that, they denied that they in turn had denied requests for additional security from the Trump campaign. Well, it turns out that they were lying because we just learned this weekend that, in fact, they did. In fact, the Secret Service has, over the past 18 to 24 months, denied requests for additional security from the Donald J. Trump for president campaign. If that bullet had actually gone a millimeter or two the other direction, 
you could make a very plausible argument that that would be blood on the hands of Kimberly Cheadle. At a bare minimum, Corey Comparatore, may his memory be a blessing, his blood certainly, I think, is on the hands of at least a little bit of the United States Secret Service there. This whole thing is an abomination. America looks like a laughingstock on the world stage because of it. And this woman needs to get the heck out of her job. Well, here is Kimberly Cheadle being accused of perjury. When you were asked earlier from Rep. Krista Morthy about whether or not Secret Service was aware of a threat, you had said no, they were unaware of a threat. And yet, according to communications, again, from law, law enforcement that were in some of these group chats, they actually had reported that Secret Service was made aware of a threat at around 5.59 p.m. Can you please tell me if you have knowledge of that at all? Again, I think we're conflating the, the difference between the term threat and suspicious. Chairman, in my opinion, according to some of the testimony today, I feel that you have perjured yourself in some instances. And so I'm going to ask for a full review of the transcripts by staff. And if you find that to be the case, I do ask that you bring perjury charges against the director. I mean, it's a complete mess. And Josh, it comes as a report into the January 6 attack at the Capitol uh, could drop any moment. Uh, what do you think we could expect from that and, and the role of the Secret Service? Well, look, we're going to have to see here. I mean, the Department of Homeland Security is is run, of course, by Alejandro Mayorkas. I mean, who was a far left nut job. He recently became the first cabinet official to be impeached in about a century and a half since the 1870s, if I have the date correctly there. So, you know, I have no doubt that he is going to exculpate the, the deep state, he's going to exculpate probably the CIA, the FBI, Secret Service. He's probably going to just blame those crazy far-right MAGA kooks. I mean, it'll, it'll be littered with the rhetoric and the nomenclature and the phraseology of insurrection and all these crazy words that have no meaning because they've totally deprived them of meaning via overuse. So I'm not exactly getting my hopes up for this report from this particular administration. But, you know, look, I mean, I mean, good for Congresswoman Anna Polina Luna, though, in that particular clip, another rising star in the party. She's right here in Florida in my particular state. These are the kind of tough interrogations we need. But again, we have to see what's going to happen with Kimberly Cheadle, because if she still has a job by this time next week, then I just toss my hands up. I don't even know what to make of that at that point. Oh, I, neither do I. It's just absolutely bizarre. Josh Hammer, great to speak with you as always. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you so much.